Okay, here we are in section 8.1, and we're going to look at uh, some different uh, techniques along with uh, figuring out how to do some taxes. In April, you'll be doing your own taxes maybe, and we want to take a look at how, how we can do that. Uh, before we start, let's um, do a little bit of review. Uh, when we want to go from a fraction to a decimal, then you actually can just do the calculation because you're going to divide uh, like in this case, three fifths. You put if you want to do longhand, you would put the three in the house, and then you would um, you would just do the division. So let's just kind of remember. And of course, we're going to use Excel to help us do a lot of this. But if we wanted to do this, we would do um, the three would go in the house, and we would put the five on the outside, and then five doesn't go into three, so we add a decimal, and and then we add a zero, and then we carry that decimal up here. 5 goes into 30 six times. So 3 fifths as a decimal is 0 0.6. 3 fifths is equal to 0 0.6 as a decimal. All right, say we didn't want to do that. Of course, you can do it in your calculator, or Excel is actually a calculator. Right? So um, in this cell, A1, I put the equal sign up in this is the function bar, so I put an equal sign, and then I'll say 3 divided by 5, and then I can hit enter. And right now, mine is actually set up to go ahead and just make it a number. If I come into the ribbon right here, it'll tell me all the different number formats. And right now, it's just general, which is like a decimal. But if I wanted, I could come down and I could ask it to write it as a fraction. And it would give it to me as 3 fifths. But I want it as a decimal, so I'll just say a general right here. Or I could have said number, and it did 0 .60. Now, if I wanted more decimal places to show, I would push this button right here, or sorry, this button right here, which would increase the number of decimals. And I can increase as many as I want, or I can decrease as many as I want. So that's kind of a little fun little Excel trick. Okay. Um, now, the next uh, question here, it says, a decimal can be written as a percent by moving the decimal place to the right, um, two places, two places to the right and adding the percent sign. So 3 fifths, which was 0 0.6, or 0.60 as a decimal, is really 60% because I move this decimal to the right two places. Well, I can actually have Excel do that for me by, once I have this cell highlighted, if I just go to the little percent symbol and I hit percent, it converts it to 60%. So that's really a fun um, tool in Excel. So if I want to do number two, I can do it with my brain. If I want to express 0 .003 as a percent, I, I know I just move the decimal to the right uh, one, two times, so it's 0.3%. Or if I want Excel to do it for me, I can come into any cell in Excel. So here I'll just choose cell B3. And I'll come up into the function or formula bar, and I'll say equals, and then I'll do 0 0.003, and I'll hit enter. Then I'll go back on and highlight the cell and choose up in the ribbon the percent style. And notice it says 0%. But um, I know that it's 0.3%, so I need, obviously, to increase my number of decimals. So let me do that. If I click a couple of times, I can see that it should have been 0.3. So sometimes you need to format it so you see enough decimal places. OK. Um, now, if we want it, what if we want to go from a percent to a decimal? Well, a percent can be written as a decimal by moving the decimal places, place, uh, two places to the left and removing the percent sign. So this 130% is understood to be 130.00. Um, and so you would just move your decimal. Let me just write that for you. So you'd be right here. And you would take that 130% uh, is 130 with a decimal. And you're going to move it to the left two places. So you would go 1, 2 and that would be your new, as a decimal, it's 1.3. 1.3 is 130%. So the answer here is 1.3. And so the same thing can be done here. If you come into Excel and you just type, like in D3, if I type 130 and then I hit the percent symbol, which is the sh on the keyboard, it's the shift for the 5. And now if I just hit Enter, um, and I want to make that a number now. I'll come back up to D3, and notice how it changed it to percentage. 
If I want it to be a number, I can click number and it'll convert it to a number for me. So Excel's real, a really handy tool to go back and forth between numbers and percents. Okay, um, many applications involve percent, involving percents are based on a formula and, um, and that is the A, in this formula, A is the percent of B. So A is P percent of B. Know that the word of implies multiplication, and you can use this formula to determine the sales tax collection, collected by states, counties, and cities on sales of local items. The sales tax is the percent of the cost of an item. So like in um, McLennan County, I think it's like 7.6 or something is our tax rate. So here's an example. Suppose the local sales tax rate is 7% and you purchase a graphing ca calculator for $96. How much tax is paid? Well, you can do that right here in Excel. I'm choosing A5 into the formula bar. I'm going to do an equal sign. And I'm going to do um, the tax rate. And I have two choices. I can make it a decimal or I can write 7 and then do a percent and then times uh, 96 and then hit enter. And it does the calculation for me. Um, it takes 7% of $96 and it gives me the answer of $6.72. So that's how I can answer that. Now it says what is the total cost of the calculator? Well here's another, this is kind of a fun thing to do in, in Excel. If I take what's in A5 and I add it to the original price, so um, I'm going to be in A6 right now. I'm going to do an equal sign. And I'm going to say take $96 and add. Now instead of just adding, typing in 6.72, you can actually grab what's in the cell, what's in A5. If I just click on it, notice it just grabs A5. And then I can hit enter. And all it did was take the 90, it did what you think, which is 96 plus 6.72. So that's just kind of a fun, Excel function, again, practicing using Excel to do some calculations. So it's $102.72. Okay, now the question is, what is the total cost of the calculator? Oh, we did that already, I'm sorry. Now let's do uh, number five. It says an exercise machine with an original price of $860 is on sale at 12% off. What is the discount amount? Okay, let's have Excel help us do this. We want to figure out what 12% of 860 is. So I'm in cell A9. I'm going to come up here. In order to do a calculation, I have to hit the equal sign. Then I'm going to do 12 and then the percent symbol and then times 860. The times is um, the, sh it's the little, um, it's like a little star and it's the shift key for the 8. And I hit enter. So this is how much it's off, 103 dollars off, okay? $103 and 20 cents. If I want to see a few more decimal places, oops, I hit the wrong one, I can go like that and see it's going to be 100 to the nearest dollar or to the nearest cent, it's $103 and 20 cents. And so then if I want to figure out what the sale price is, maybe I could do that in A10. I'll do an equal sign and I'll take the original price of the machine, which was $860, and then I'll subtract the 103.20. But instead of typing it in, I can actually just grab that cell, A9, by just clicking on it. And notice it shows up in the formula bar. And then I hit enter, and it tells me the new price, $756.80. So that's kind of a fun um, feature of ways that you can do uh, these calculations using Excel. Okay. Now we're going to talk about income tax, because income tax uses percents. And um, in order to do income tax, you have to first determine your adjusted gross income. And your adjusted gross income is your gross income minus any adjustments that you may have. So um, your gross income is all your income for the year, including wages, tips, earnings from investments, and unemployment compensation. And you subtract the adjustments that you subtract from that are payments to tax deferred savings plans. So if you have um, a retirement account, you would subtract that from your gross income. So it reduces your gross income into retirement or investment accounts. Now your taxable income is your adjusted gross income minus 
any exemptions plus abduction, deductions that you have. So in 2008, each person got a $3,500 um, exemption, and you got the same amount for each dependent, where a dependent would be like a child, or if you had a mother, a parent that lived with that didn't have a job, or something like that. Um, and then you have deductions, which are either you have a standard deduction, or you could go through and do what's called an itemized deduction if you have like um, a home mortgage, state income tax, property tax, charitable contributions, and that sort of thing. Whichever is larger is what you put in as a deduction. You add your exemptions plus your deductions, and that sum you subtract from your adjustable gross income, and that gives you your taxable income. And then in order to find your income tax, you compute your tax computation using the table below, and um, then you get to subtract any tax credits that you have, because sometimes you'll have a $1,000 tax credit or um, the cost of child care so a parent can work, adoption ex credits for qualified expenses, and all, all sorts of different tax credits that you can get. Even um, nowadays, if you, if you purchase a vehicle that has you know, a new type of technology, or if you buy a low E or a high energy efficient um, appliance, you might be able to get a tax credit. So these tax credits are really cool because they come off right off your tax bill. Okay? So here's a sample tax table that's going to help us work a couple of problems. Uh, here's something for you to know that um, this is just what I said. A tax credit is not the same as a tax deduction. A tax credit of $500 reduces the income tax owed by the full dollar amount, namely $500. But a tax deduction of $12,100 just reduces your taxable income. So there's a difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit. All right, so here's our situation. We have a um, single male with no dependents, and he has a gross income of $75,000 and he has an adjustment of 4000 so this must be money that he's putting into retirement into a retirement account. Um, now he has a mortgage interest deduction, property taxes, and $3,000 in charitable contributions, and he has no tax credit. So the first thing that we want to look at is um, that he's a single male with no dependents. So that's going to be this first column right here that we're going to use. Now, in order to figure out his um, taxable income, we need to follow the steps above. So the first thing you do is you take, um, you determine your adjusted gross income by taking your gross income and subtract any adjustments that you have. So his gross income is $75,000. Okay, so his gross income, so, um, let me, okay, so his adjusted gross income is going to be equal to the 75000 minus the 4000 So that's, if you can do that in your head or you can do that in Excel or with a calculator, is 71000 Now his taxable income what you do is you take your adjusted gross income, so that's 71000 and you subtract from it the sum of your exemptions plus your deductions. Now, it's just a single man, so his ex exemption, the standard exemption, if you look at the table, is $5,450. That's his, uh, uh, sorry, uh, his standard, his exemption is $3,500, and his the standard deduction would be $5,450. What you're going to do is you're going to compare that standard deduction to the sum of these deductions, the $28,000 plus the $4,200 plus the $3,000, and whichever's larger is what you're going to, to use. So it's $71,000 plus it's $71,000 minus the um, exemptions plus the deductions. Now the deductions you're going to look, you're going to choose either the standard deduction or the sum of his deductions, whichever is larger. And the exemption you're going to do $3,500 per person, but since he's single it's just going to be $3,500. So we're going to be doing this 
71,000 minus the exemption, which is for him, since it's just a, third, a single person, 3,500, plus the deductions, which you can probably look at this and see that the larger number is going to be the sum of these deductions that he has, the 28,000, 4,200, and 3,000. So I'll just come up here in Excel and figure out what that is. If I do an equal sign, and I do 28,000 plus uh, 4,200, 4,200 plus 3,000, that's um, 35,200, that is going to be his um, deduction, so 35,000, uh, how much was it, 30, sorry, 35,200 dollars. $35,200. This is then going to be his taxable income. So I need to do 71,000 minus the sum of these two. And I can do that in Excel. I can just come up to any cell and I can go equals 71,000 minus, and if I want to add two things first I'll need to do a parenthesis, parenthesis 3,500 plus $35,200, close parenthesis, and hit enter. And so $32,300 is what we would call his uh, taxable income. That number right there, $32,300 is his taxable income. Okay, and if you want to make this um, column bigger so you can see it. That's it right there. 32300 is his taxable income. Alright, now what do we do with that? Well, now we're ready to calculate his tax. Uh, you'll see that for up to $8,025 he's going to be taxed at this 10% um, rate. And then um, the remainder of his salary which is going to be from 8,026 to, well, we have to just figure out what that is, 32,300 minus the 8,025, that's going to be taxed at the 15% rate. So we're going to have tax at 10% is going to be $8,025 of his um, income. And then tax at 15%. How will we calculate that? Well, what that will be is equal to his total taxable income. So I'm going to do the equal sign. I'm going to say the total taxable income, and then I'm going to subtract what's already taxed at the 10% rate, which is the 8,025, and I hit enter. And so he's going to have um, 8,025 taxed at 10%, and 24,275 is going to be taxed at 15%. Okay? And so then his income tax will be what? All right, well, it'll be equal to the 8,025 at 10%. So you can say 10% times the 8,025, so that's an E11, plus, all right, now this amount, 24,275, is going to be taxed at 15%. So I can do 15% times, and then I can just grab that cell that's in E12 and hit enter. And so this number right here, $4,443.75, that is his income tax. He has to write a check to the government for that amount. Okay? Let's try another one. It says, um, an unmarried head of household with two dependent children, his gross income is $50,000, um, he has no adjustments, uh, um, and we have two deductions. We have a $4,500 uh, in state taxes and a $2,000 theft loss, so $6,500 in itemized deductions. And notice this person is going to get $2,000 right off their tax bill because they have a tax credit. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find their adjusted gross income. Now, um, I'm going to grab this 
cell right here. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to pop it into my Excel so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So I'm coming here and I'm just going to paste that. So I have that little picture, this little formula here to look at. And then um, what other situation, what other things would I like to grab into my worksheet so I can think? Um, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab that. And then also I'm going to grab the whole situation, which is fifth. And put it into my Excel worksheet so I can show it to you all at once. Okay, so we have an unmarried head of household with two dependent children. So in this table, we need to look for the head of household um, which is this last column. And in this last column for the head of households, notice the standard deduction is $8,000. This person only has a itemized deductions of $4,500 plus $2,000, which is $6,500. So in this case, when we go to um, compute their taxable income, the deduction that we're going to choose is the standard deduction because their itemized deduction is actually less than the standard deduction of $8,000. Okay, um, first let's get their adjusted gross income. And so this is adjusted gross income. All right, let's try that. Well, um, what is their adjusted gross income? Well, it's their gross income minus their adjustments. Now, this person doesn't have any adjustments. I guess they're just trying to get by with the two kids. They don't have any money that they're saving into retirement, which is unfortunate. But that means that they just have $50,000 in, in adjusted gross income. Now, to get their taxable income, what am I going to do? Well, according to the formula, I'm going to take their adjusted gross income and I'm going to subtract any exemptions plus deductions that they have. So up in the formula bar, I'm going to do the equal sign. So I'm up here in the formula bar. Notice my cell is M41. That's where I'm doing the work. So I'm going to take their adjusted gross income, which is right here in M40, um, and then I'm going to subtract the sum, so I do a parenthesis, and it might be easier to look up in this cell up here, of their um, exemptions, okay? So what are their exemptions? Well, it's an unmarried head of household with two dependent children. So it's $3,500 times three. So I'm going to do three times 3,500 plus, Okay, what else? Their deductions. Now, we notice that their standard deduction is for a head of household is $8,000. But um, for this situation, uh, their itemized deductions only adds up to $6,500, so it makes more sense to use this $8,000. It's going to get, they're going to get more money off their taxable income if you use the $8,000. And then I'll just hit enter, and that's going to be this person's what we call their taxable income, $31,500. Now from there, we'll use the table to determine what their taxes are. So we'll have their tax at 10%. What will that be? The tax at 10% will be $11,450. Now how about tax? at 15%. Well, what you'll do is you'll take their taxable income and you'll subtract $11,450 and that is $20,050. Now notice the 15% tax rate goes up to $43,650 so um, this, there's no additional money that's going to be taxed at a higher level. So we are, we're fine here. They have a 10% tax 
of 11,450, and then we have a 15% tax on 20,050. So this total, this, this, these two numbers right here add up to their taxable income. Okay, so um, their income tax is going to be what? Well, it'll be an equal sign. I'm up in the formula bar, and it's going to be 10% at this number. So I'll do 10% times the 11,450, which is an M42, plus 15% times 20,050. Oops, it didn't like that. Um, no, it didn't like that because I hit the 8 instead of the shift. So times 20,050, and which is in M43. And then I hit enter. And this number right here is their income tax, but not quite because they have a tax credit. These people have a $2,000 tax credit, so I get to subtract right off their income tax that $2,000 tax credit. So their final tax that they have to pay to the government is $2,152.50. And if you want to make sure it's 50 cents, you can increase the number of decimals right there to see it as a decimal. Okay? All right. So that was. Um, those were some nice computations there. Let's now move. This is, um, I think, number 15 or number 14 on your actual online homework, and it's a little bit of a tricky problem, so I wanted to work it um, with you. And let's go ahead and work it in Excel. If you ever wanted to get a new page in Excel, you can just, a new sheet to work on, like this sheet's got too much stuff in it, we can come right in here and do like sheet two or sheet three. Um, but I don't want to move, I don't want to lose this, so I think I'll just paste my problem right here. And then I'll just kind of clean some of this up, like, I'll just hit delete to clear that out. And then I'm, this table is not going to apply to this, so I'm going to delete it. And then I'll move this right here. Okay. So we have, um, use the marginal tax rates in the table to the right to calculate the income tax owed by the following person. A single male with no dependents. He makes $85,000 a year and he has $1,000 in adjustments. Now his deductions are $33,000 mortgage, $4,656 in property tax, and $1,000 in charitable contributions. He has no tax credits. Okay, so he's a single male, so we're going to use this column right here. Notice the standard deduction for a single male is $5,000. But look at all the deductions he has. So definitely for him, the itemized deductions are going to be the way to go. If you want, you can just go ahead and um, calculate those um, numbers. You can get the itemized deductions by coming in and just saying equals. And so it's 33,000 plus 4,656 plus 1,000 and hit enter. So he has $38,656 in itemized deductions, so that's going to be quite helpful to reduce his taxable income. Now let's go ahead and get his adjusted gross income. Adjusted gross income. Sometimes we call that the AGI. All right. Well, that is equal to his gross income, which is $85,000 minus any adjustments that he has, which is just $1,000 that I guess that he put into retirement. So his adjusted gross income is $84,000. Now his taxable income, I'll come over here, it's equal to your adjusted gross income, so I'm going to select this cell, and then you subtract, and then you do a parenthesis, the exemptions, now he's a single male, so he only has one exemption. Single male, no dependents. So that's going to be $3,200 plus his um, deductions, which are these itemized deductions are the way to go. So I can just select that cell and then close my parentheses and then hit enter. So his taxable income is $42,144. Okay. So, um, in order to figure out, this is going to be a little bit more tricky, his income tax, 
because of the way the tax structure works, um, the way this table is set up, he's going to have $7,300 tax at 10%. Then the piece of his income between 7301 to 29700 that is going to be taxed at um, at a a at the rate of 15% and then any income he has between 29701 to 7000 71950 that's going to be taxed at uh, the 25% rate. So uh, let me show you what, what I'm talking about. So we have a tax at the 10%. We'll have to calculate that. And then we have a tax at 15%. But then poor guy, he's also going to have a tax at the 25% rate. Okay, the tax at 10% is going to be $7,300. It's just going to be this, the total there. Now, to figure out how much he's going to be taxed at 15%, what you need to do is, um, because it's up to $29,700 of his income from 7301 to 29700 you need to figure out how much that is. So what you're going to do is take twenty. 9,700 and you're going to subtract 7,300. That is going to be the amount, oh I forgot to put the equal sign, so I'll come in here and do the equal sign. That is going to be the amount of his income, 22,400, that is taxed at 15 percent. Then to figure out how much of his income is taxed at 25 percent, well, notice the 25% goes up to 71950 So we only need the piece of his income from, um, from the 29700 up to 42140 what's left over of his income. So I'll come right in here and I'll do equals um, the, uh, his total taxable income, 42000 144, so that's in M35, and then I'm going to subtract the um, 29,700 because it's all that's after 29,700 29, up until 42,144. That's what's going to be taxed at the 25% rate. So I'll do 29,700. I'll subtract that from his income and hit enter. Okay, and so what we've done is we've sort of pieced up his income into three separate tax brackets, okay? So we actually say he's in the 25th percent tax bracket, but he's not paying, all of his income is not being paid at 25%. He's, um, he's got part of his income at 10%, part of his income at 15%, part of his income at 25%. But let me just show you something. If I hit the equal sign and I add up these numbers, so I say go ahead and sum up these numbers in this column, they will sum to his income. Notice, see there? That sums to his total income. So what we did with these tax brackets is we, we, um, we pieced up or chunked up his income into these different tax brackets. So the first $7,300 that he earned is taxed at 10%. And then to get this number, we went, okay, the 15% the tax bracket goes up to 29700 Since his taxable income was more than that, we find the entire amount, the entire difference from 7300 to 29700 So you just subtract. So you have $22,400 that's taxed at the 15% rate. And then when you look at the 25% rate, his income is below the highest of that. So you know that from 29700 until his income is going to be what's taxed at the 25% rate. So that's why we did his income of 42144 minus the, this value, the highest value in the 15% tax rate, which was the 29700 Okay, and that does um, add up to his total income. If you add those up, that adds up to his total income. That's how you can check and make sure you have it right. Okay, that was stressful, right? And you're not even done yet. So now you know how his tax rate is chunked up. 
So what you're going to need to do is get 10% of 7,300, 15% of 22,400, and 25% of 12,444. So we can go into this column here and we can do equals 10% and then times the 7,300. And then in the next one we do equals, now we're at 15% of 22,400, we hit enter. And now we're at 25% of, so do the times, 12,400, oops, I didn't do an equal sign, so let me do an equal sign, equals 25% of the, um, I've got to move my cursor, so I'm right here, of that number, and hit enter. And these numbers are his different taxes, and so we can say equals, and we sum those up, and that's going to be his total tax, $7,201. If he had a tax credit, we would get to um, take money off of that, but he doesn't have a tax credit, so we don't get to do it. So $7,201 is your answer. So I can, if I hit this, it'll fill it in yellow. It's kind of fun. $7,201 is his tax. That was, that was a tricky one. So the online homework has a couple tricky problems on it. Okay, let's continue um, in our lesson. It says, in addition to income tax, we're required to pay the federal government FICA taxes. Um, and they're used for Social Security and Medicare. For people who are not self-employed, the 2008 FICA tax rate were as follows. We have 7.65% on the first 102000 from wages and tips and then 1.45 on income in excess of 102000 So the individual's employer must also pay matching amounts of FICA tax. People who are self-employed pay double the rates shown. Taxpayers are not permitted to subtract adjustments, exemptions, or deductions when determining your FICA tax. Okay, so in 2008, to help pay for college, you worked part-time at a local restaurant earning $20,000 in tips, and you're asked to calculate your FICA tax. Well, all you have to do here is multiply 20,000 times 7.65% because that's going to be your FICA tax. So I can come into Excel and I'm just going to go to a new sheet. So I'll go to sheet two here. I just clicked on sheet two and I'm going to say equals and I'll do 20,000 times 7.65%. So $1,530 is my uh, FICA tax. Now, it says use the table from before to calculate your income tax. Assume you are single with no dependents and have no adjustments or tax credits, and you take the standard deductions. This is going to be a pretty straightforward problem. I'll copy this, and I'll come into my Excel, and I'll paste it right here. And so I'm a person that makes $20,000 in taxes and tips. So, uh, and I'm single, and I have a standard deduction, and, standard de and I have no adjustments. So my adjusted gross income, AGI, is just what I make, which is the $20,000. All right, now my taxable income is equal to my adjusted gross income minus my exemptions plus my deductions. Now, I, I'm just working in college by myself, so I just have, I'm just myself, which is a $3,500 exemption. And then I also have a standard deduction, because I guess I'm living in an apartment or whatever, of $5,450. I add those together and subtract them from my income. All right, that makes my taxable income then um, $11,050. So, at 10%, the tax at 10% is going to be the total um, amount at 10%, which is 8025 Now, to get to the tax, I'm also going to be in the 15% tax bracket, and that's because my taxable income of 11050 falls in between on this bracket here. So, all I have to do is figure out how much beyond 8025 I earn to get my tax at 15%. So 
So I'll say, all right, let, let me take, this is equal to my taxable income minus the amount that I already paid at 10%, the 8025 So these two numbers together, added together, at make my total taxable income. So I have $8,000.25 tax at 10% and $3,025 tax at 15%. So I can just come into this column, I say equals, I'll do 10% times the 8,025 and hit enter. And in this column, or in this cell, I'll do equals, and I'm going to do 15% times the 3,025 and hit enter. So these are the two tax values that I pay, and I need to add those up to get my total tax. So in this last cell, I can say equals the sum of these two numbers and hit enter. So I have $1,256.25 is my, um, are my, my income tax. Now, I also have a FICA tax. Remember, that was up here of $1,530. So the total tax that I'm paying is going to be my income tax plus my FICA, right? And so my income tax was, um, so now in this cell I can say equals the income tax, which is $1,256.25 plus my FICA, which is the $1,530. So right here, this number in this cell, 2786 dollars and 25 cents, that is my, um, that is my income, uh, that's my total tax that I'm paying. So if you wanted, just for fun, if you want to figure out what percent of your income is taxed, well he made $20,000, $20, so what part of uh, $20,000 is $2,786.25? The way you figure that out is you do equals, you take the part and you divide that by your total income, which is 20,000, hit enter, and then you can make that number a percent. If you make that a percent, it's about 14 percent, or if you want to show a few more decimal places, 13.9 percent of your income is um, paid in taxes. That's kind of a bummer. Right? So that's quite complicated uh, little thought process that's going on there. But once you get your income tax, you add your FICA tax to it, that's your total tax that you've paid. Then you do your total tax, divide that by your adjusted gross income, and then I'll tell you how much, what percent of your income you had to pay to the government. Okay, so let's continue. And I think we're going to get away from calculus, from the taxes, and just talk about this idea of percent increase or percent decrease. So um, when you're finding a percent increase or percent decrease, you always just do the amount of the increase divided by the original amount or the amount of the decrease divided by the original amount. And to make it a percent, once you, you, can, um, you can just use Excel to make it as a percent or you can just multiply by 100. Okay, so let's look at number nine. It says, find the percent increase in the average math scores from 1995 to 2007 for the country with the highest average math scores in 2007. All right, in 2007, that's the yellow, uh, it looks like China had the highest math scores of 607. And um, we want to find the percent increase. So from 1995, it was 557. And, in, and so we can do this in Excel. I'll come in here and just do a new sheet. Now remember the amount, your percent increase is uh, the amount of the increase divided by the original amount. So you can be pretty snazzy and do this all in one line. I'm just going to put it in the middle here. D4, I'll say it's equal to, let's find the increase. So we'll do a parenthesis and we'll do 607 minus 557 and then close that parenthesis. That subtraction is going to be the amount of the increase 
and then we divide that by the original amount, which was 557, and hit enter. And then we want to make this number a percent. So we can put, we can go right here on the cell and we can just hit the percent button and it does it for us. Now, if the online homework wants more of a decimal place, you can just increase your number of decimals. Uh, maybe there's three decimal places or however many decimal places they ask for. If they ask for two, you can decrease it um, to 8.98 percent. Okay, now it says, Find the percent increase in the average math scores from 1995 to 2007 for the country, country with the lowest score in 2007. Okay, it looks like Iran had the lowest score. So to find the percent increase, we do equals. First we have to find the difference. So I'm going to do parenthesis 402 minus 387, close parenthesis, and then I divide that by the original amount, which is 387. That's the amount that it was in 1995. Okay, and then I want to make this number a percent. I might be able to do it in my head by moving my decimal to the um, right two places, or I can just come right here and put the little percent symbol, and if I want to see a few more decimal places, I see I get 3.88 percent is the, um, the increase, percent increase for Iran as compared to China who had a 8.98 percent increase. Okay, now let's read our last problem here. It says, suppose that you have $10,000 in a rather risky investment recommended by your financial advisor. During the first year, your investment decreased by 30% of its original value. During the second year, your in in investment increases by 40%. Your advisor tells you there must have been a 10% overall increase in your original, of your original $10,000 investment. Is your financial advisor using percentages properly? If not, what is your actual percent gain or loss of your original $10,000 investment? Okay, well, he's actually not doing a, um, a good computation for you. See, you started with $10,000, so I'm just going to pop that into A4. Then what happened? After the first year, Um, you have a decrease, right? After the first year, it decreases by 30%. So um, that means you have to figure out what 30% of $10,000 is. So you can go up here and do equals 30% times this $10,000. So the first year you have a $3,000 decrease. Alright, now the second year, what happens? Well, in the second year, you have a 40% increase of its first year value, but the first year value is only $7,000 because um, you, start, you, you lost $3,000 in the first year. So you could say equals um, $7,000 times 40%. So you have a $2,800 gain. So in actuality, you have a $200 loss, right? You actually lost $200. So actually, so this means that you have a loss of $200. So the value of your account after two years is the $10,000 minus $2,000. So we can come in here, you can do, I mean minus $200. It's equal to the $10,000 minus the $200 or $9,800. So to answer, the, the advisor is wrong, and if not, what is your actual percent gain or loss of your original $10,000? Well, you lost $10,000, and so, I mean, it's $200, so you only have $9,800 in your account right now. So your percent decrease is going to be $200 divided by the original amount, which was $10,000. So you have a um, percent decrease 
of what? Well, it's equal to the change, which was $200, divided by the original amount, which was $10,000. And then you can make that a percent. And you'll see that instead of him saying you have a 10% overall increase, you actually have a 2% decrease. Because the first year you, you lost 3,000, then the second year you gained 2,800, but you have an overall loss of $200, which means that you have a 2% decrease. Okay, so I hope that this um, lesson got you kind of familiar a little bit with Excel and you were able to kind of work through some of these problems.